What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out the last great Mr. Money in the Bank by none other than Super Kick Studios. If you haven't already subscribed to him, go ahead, give Super uh, Kick Studios a subscribe and hit the uh, bell notification. He makes some pretty quality uh, um, wrestling related content. He likes to talk about you know things that happen uh in the past like some of the the greater wrestling moments in wwe so definitely go check it out and this latest video is is kind of crazy because we may come full circle again with seth rollins potentially and and it seems as if, as if the highly favorable winner of money in the bank and i don't know he may end up repeating history and potentially cashing in on roman reigns and Brock Lesnar at this year's SummerSlam. That's what people were kind of speculating. That's what kind of people are wanting. We will see if that happens. Let's get right into this one. This should be a good one. And let's do the damn thing. Since 2005, the Money in the Bank match has been one of the most exciting and downright legendary matches on the WWE calendar. Every year, it's a question as to who will become Mr. Money in the Bank and now Miss Money in the Bank. You can't deny that since they made it a standalone pay-per-view in 2010, it's arguably been treated so well and performed so consistently that it's worked its way up into WWE's Big Four. A show mm -hmm. which you can go back to in any year and you'll have standout matches that are some of the best from that year. But and I will say this. Them making money in the bank of pay-per-view, I can work with. That's one of the few matches that they turned into a pay-per-view that you could actually work with. They built uh a a stage for that event which originally i wasn't a big fan of but after a while it was one of the more highlights of each year they made it somewhat important and especially since they added a women's money in the bank that it, it makes sense for it to have its own pay-per-view i still think hell in a cell should not be its own pay-per-view i still think elimination chamber should not be its own pay-per-view but that's neither here or there but we're all here for the main concept, the Money in the Bank ladder match, an opportunity for one male and one female competitor to win their respective world titles within a one year time frame. Since the concept began, it's seen 26 winners, with three men, those being Edge, Miz, and CM Punk, holding onto the contract twice. Mm -hmm. Out of those 26 winners, 22 cash-ins have been successful, while four have failed. Two winners, those being Otis and Mr. Kennedy, never got to cash in their contract because they lost it to another superstar. Yep. When Edge won it in 2005, he cemented himself as the true Mr. Money in the Bank. The concept was still in its early stages, and he was the catalyst for what came afterwards. And uh, I guess he said originally um, he didn't even want to be in that match. Edge did not want to be in that match. Um, and they had to convince him to be a part of that match. So the... Just think, if he never was a part of this match, never, and he never got, you know, in this match, we may not have had the legendary run of Edge at, that we have now, so. Including PTSD for every John Cena fan around. <laughs> with Money in the Bank, it was kind of this traditional path, if you will. Win the Money in the Bank, carry it around for a while, give the crowd some time to get familiar with you and your character, get into some big matches and rivalries, and then in a big moment, cash in the money in the bank, become world champion, and by the time you lose it, you're set. You're one of the premier faces of WWE. Mm -hmm. The money in the bank essentially was a device to see if the person who it was given to could handle a sustained push in the main event. Yep. And early on, the track record was very strong, but in recent years, it's become pretty spotty. There's been some irrational winners who during their time as Mr. Money in the Bank haven't felt like they belong. And the ones who do end up winning the world title, well, their subsequent reigns just feel like flops. They yeah. don't feel like they should be at the top. Sometimes it's because they don't have a defined character. And most of the time, it comes down to bad booking and not having someone else on the other end who can bring the best out of you. Same thing with Big E. I don't, Big E's title reign should have been better. But they kind of dropped the ball with the booking of who he was facing. And in my opinion, I think they dropped the ball with his character. I feel like if you become the champ, something has to change, whether it's good or whether it's bad character wise. What I mean by good is like you're more serious. You take things a little bit more seriously. You come off more legit. 
or in a bad sense, character wise, is like you become more paranoid because you don't want to lose the championship. So you may turn heelish. You'll do anything to keep the title. I don't, I didn't really sense that with Biggie. I feel like it was just still Biggie, goofy and you know hip thrusting. It's like you got to be serious when you become a champ. You're the top guy. Someone people got to believe that you are the top guy for a reason. And it has been pretty rough. In 2021, Big E won the Money in the Bank briefcase. When he got his moment and became WWE champion, it was beautiful. Yeah, it was But the cool. title reign, he himself called the title reign a failure. In 2020, Otis won the contract, mm. and we all knew that there was no way Otis was going to become world champion. So it was given to The Miz. He became WWE champion, and at that, he was a transitional WWE yeah. champion, holding it for only eight days before losing it to Bobby Lashley. 2019, Boombox Brock, he was really entertaining, but he didn't really need the contract considering the others in that match hadn't really broke through yet. He also held the title for a month and then he lost it to Rollins. 2018, Braun Strowman won and he somehow got worse after he won the contract. Yep. They turned him heel and the match ended in a... Which is so stupid. Oh, when they turned him heel, I was like, you didn't have to do that. Just, just what the hell? They ruined him. Once he won that, they ruined him. No contest. 2017, Baron Corbin, another uninspiring cash-in, and if reports are to be believed, the demotion came because of the way he was acting backstage. Mm -hmm. 2016, I actually thought it was really well done because Dean Ambrose wasn't just going to carry around money in the bank. The whole thing with his character was to be reactive. Yep. The moment was so perfect. He cashed in on the dude who made his life hell and broke up his group. Mm -hmm. All three members of the Shield held the WWE title in one night. 2015, Sheamus won the contract. He took a lot of losses while he held it. He was in the mid card. You could also say that he didn't really need it. He was a two-time WWE champion at this point. And again, Sheamus was basically a sacrifice for another dude. He was a sacrifice to build up Roman Reigns. Yep. Of course, you and I both know that there needs to be variety. If everything is the same, if everyone always gets their cash in, and if everyone always has that exact same road, it's not fun. We need differentiation in the WWE, and we do need those failed cash-ins as well. Over the last little bit, Money in the Bank has just kind of been there. Stars haven't broken out to a top level and excelled beyond just a memorable moment or a shaky title reign. With the exception of one man. One man who, in my opinion, is the last great Mr. Money in the Bank. From Seth his book to his matches, his presentation, his rivalries, and of course, the moment he delivered at the end. A dude who made it his mission to make Money in the Bank feel like the most important thing. He made it feel like more than a prop. He simply made it his life. By the time he cashed in, the contract looked like it had gone through hell. Yep. The contract told a story that was way more than just a cash in. And that man. Oh, yeah, that briefcase looked damn it. 2014, the day where Rollins took a chair to the back of Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns, and he changed the trajectory of his career forever. And man, that chair shot may have hit two grown men. But it hit WWE fans right in the heart. Mm -hmm. Like, we all knew that the Shield was going to come to an end sooner or later, but no one in their wildest dreams could have imagined that it would be the day after they swept Evolution in a three on three elimination match. One of the greatest swerves in WWE history. I watched it live. I did not see that coming, bro. I was so, so shocked. It's one of the greatest heel turns, greatest swerves. Of all time. That shit was great. But as Triple H said, there's always a plan B. And plan B was Seth Rollins. Now joining Randy Orton and Triple H in the authority. He started to wear suits. He started to talk slower. And everywhere he went, all you would hear were chants of you sold, sold out. out. Mm -hmm. This was the most hated man in the company. That's, that's but how he had you a do problem it. problem that was way bigger than the crowd. And that was Dean Ambrose, who just wouldn't let him go. He was obsessed with him. And these two, throughout the summer and early fall, they had a fantastic mm -hmm. rivalry, which not only made a ton of sense in storyline, but it delivered on all fronts. Ambrose made it his mission that he was going to kill Rollins. Yep, <laughs> I loved it. The Money in the Bank match, and just when you think Ambrose is gone, he shows back up again. But with the help of Kane, Seth Rollins captured the Money in the Bank briefcase. And y'all have no idea the maniacal shit and the amount of people he was about to piss off over the next few months. So Ambrose is ambushing Rollins at every point, and these two are set to face off at Battleground. 
We get there. These two are going to fight. Before the match, Rollins is giving an interview. <laughs> here comes Ambrose to attack Rollins. Their feud was good, bro. Even when the roles reversed and Ambrose turned heel, their feud was fun. Until they turned Ambrose into Bane, which was quite dumb. But outside of that, their feud will always be so, so legendary. Man, loved it so much. Later, we're ready for the match. The match never happens because Ambrose just wants Rollins dead. Mm -hmm. They brawl, they're separated, and later on, Rollins is leaving the arena. After being attacked twice, would he leave in one piece? Nope. Out comes Ambrose from the front. <laughs> Rollins then robs a car to flee away, and this thread continued at every point. This was so Look, good. Rollins is in the main event of Raw. John Cena, the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, is out. Rollins is ready to cash in the Money in the Bank contract. Nope. <laughs> Look, Rollins is fighting Heath Slater in a Beat the Clock challenge. There is no way Rollins loses. Nope. Oh, look, <laughs> gifts for Hulk Hogan. There's no way. Rollins is completely fine. Nope. There was just a great <laughs> Bro, Rollins. I mean, Dean Ambrose wanted to kill this Jacob, bro. <laughs> it took, I want to say, it took. Seth Rollins curb stomping Dean Ambrose onto some cinder blocks for him to stop. <laughs> the company made it their mission to not only give Seth Rollins a premier spotlight, but oh, also this is put great. Him in big leagues immediately. <laughs> Something which is missing with Money in the Bank winners of today. He was fighting Cena, he was fighting RVD, he was in segments with Randy Orton and Triple H, and it really benefited oh, him. Oh, he's to be so part down. RVD's of, so down. If not dead. the biggest act in the company. Kofi so down Rollins too. Rollins beat Ambrose in a short but really fun lumberjack match. All hell broke loose in this match, and of course, it was that same briefcase that he won the match with. The company was booking him as a chicken shit heel, and it just worked. Mm -hmm. So the next night, Ambrose decides that he's gonna force Rollins to do the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. But Rollins, he wasn't having any of this. He decided he's going to bash in Ambrose's head yep. into cinder blocks. The next week, this man comes out and he delivers a eulogy of Ambrose's career. And he's like, Ambrose is dead. He's never coming back. I killed him. I ruined him. I ruined the shield. I made Ambrose the biggest what if in the business. I did this, that, and the other. And maybe Stephanie in between too. You know what they say. What happens in room 605 <laughs> what? stays in room 605. And he was building his character. Slowly but surely, everything was coming together. His reactions were starting to get louder. His fan base was starting to get bigger. And he became, for younger viewers, what Edge was for me. Yeah. The guy that you just had to hate. Yep, and now, he with did. Ambrose gone, his next opponent was Roman Reigns. Roman wasn't having any of it, though. This man attempted to kill Rollins with a cinder block, but <laughs> Rollins dodged it. Rollins started to get on everyone's nerves. Cena, Orton... And apparently he even pissed off God because this dude almost had a spike planted right into his yeah, back. Yeah, that was to enter a steel cage. Yeah, that was a, to a close call there. Life hell, and they were headed for a match at Night of Champions for no championship. We get yeah. there. Roman has to have emergency hernia surgery. Rollins has no opponent. He takes the forfeit win, and he's like, "Okay." Let's throw out an open challenge. A car pulls up, and of course, it's Ambrose. So, <laughs> mom and dad come out. They're like, all right, get Ambrose out of here. They zap strap him out of the arena, and at the end of the night, it's the main event. Cena and Lesnar and Rollins is just watching on like this. A brutal <laughs> match, and from behind, Seth Rollins comes to cash in the money in the bank. The cash-in never happened, but what did happen was he destroyed Cena's chance at becoming WWE champion. So now Ambrose and Cena are both legit pleading. They are begging that they want to be the one to take out Rollins. He was disturbing so much shit that they had a full-on chase scene on Raw with two... <laughs> I get... forgot about that. Bro, Seth Rollins, you got to put some respect on his name, man. He held it down, definitely, for Raw with, uh, with the authority angle. That shit worked because of him. To be honest with you, and now he's holding it down even more on Monday Night Raw, <laughs> even even as of today. Seth. So again, this man jacks a car and he flees away. At this point, he's pissed <laughs> off Roman, he's pissed off Cena, Ambrose, Lesnar, Heyman, all the Shield fans, and slowly he's getting to Randy Orton mm -hmm. too, because Randy Orton has to put out all the fires that Seth Rollins started. So now wherever this dude goes, he's always got someone coming for him. It was actually crazy. The amount of shit he disturbed, the amount of enemies he made. But the biggest enemy he made was Ambrose. And the most important thing to Seth Rollins was the briefcase. That was his ticket to the top. 
So Ambrose stole it. He started to play mind games with it. So Triple H sends Joey and Jamie on a secret mission to go retrieve the briefcase. These two are just scouring the arena looking for Ambrose. Bro, but look they at that briefcase. Him. Just messed up. It was messed a one-day storyline, but it was actually pretty funny. Ambrose shows up in the ring and the cruiserweight division plus a ton of security. They managed to get the contract back and throughout the night, Rollins was just losing his mind. He's telling us that he has very valuable possessions in there. Rollins gets it back. He opens it up, hoping everything is still intact. And then this happens. Slime right to the face and mm -hmm. then Rollins proceeds to have a meltdown. Apparently, one of the things he kept in the briefcase was a vibe. I mean, electric razor. And all over Raw, it's just chaos. It's all <laughs> chaos because everybody wants to kill yeah. Rollins. Cena and Ambrose <laughs> even have a contract on a pole ladder match to determine who's going to face Rollins at Hell in a Cell. Ambrose wins it. These two had such an amazing Hell in a Cell match. They brawl at the top of it. They fall from the side. No, they had a good Hell in a Cell Rollins match. getting stretched out, and Ambrose is like, nah, not today. You ruined everything for me, and he tried to destroy him. Yep. Rollins won the match after Bray Wyatt got involved with Ambrose, so he had Ambrose off his back. But there was one problem, maybe a bigger problem. He still had Cena on his case. So Randy's seeing that no one's giving a shit about him anymore, and he tries to kill Rollins. He tells yep. Triple H that he's going to rest when Rollins is dead. Rollins Bro, outsmarts. This was a nice feud, too. I just love when Randy was playing like, yeah, I get it. It's, it's all water under the bridge. And then he suckers them in. And like stupid, stupid started. I forgot what episode he beat the crap out of him on Monday Night Raw. It was great. Oh Starts man! He stomps Orton out on the announce yep. table and then on the steel steps, and he takes him out for a while. On the other end, we were building for Survivor Series 2014. Team Authority versus Team Cena. Steph and Triple H wanted Cena to join, but Cena wouldn't. So they told him, whoever joins you, we're going to make sure that their life is hell. Vince comes out and he's like, all right, if Team Authority loses, they're out of power. They'd been abusing their power. They'd been pissing people off. So this was the only rational explanation. And the build up to this Survivor Series match was so fire. The main guys during this were Rollins, Cena, Ziggler, and The Authority. Come mm -hmm. Survivor Series, Rollins alongside Ziggler had a fantastic performance in the main event. The Authority lost thanks to Sting. Mm -hmm. But Rollins, he wasn't done being a mastermind just yet. There was a rule that only one man could bring back The Authority and that was John Cena. So on the last Raw of 2014, Rollins is invited to the Cutting Edge Peep Show with Edge, who, as WWE told us, if he took one more fatal blow to the neck, he'd be paralyzed, and Christian, who had also had his fair share of injury troubles as well. So the authority, they get rid of Christian, and they hold down Edge to the mat. And, and I, this was a good, this was a really good segment, too. I enjoyed this. This is so, so good, and I'm glad that they brought it back full circle when Edge was able to actually compete again. Love this. You just, you just like, bro, you're just, Edge, uh, Seth was just a piece of sh garbage. And it's so fitting because Edge was the same way at one point. Didn't bring back his parents. Rollins was going to stomp out Edge. So after some attempts to save a well-respected wrestler, Cena brings back the authority. And then Rollins is like, damn, you got to know me better than that. I'm going to kill him anyways. But Cena got in the way. Edge wasn't harmed. But the authority was back. Their first order of business was to put Rollins into Cena and Lesnar's championship match at the Rumble. And on the road to the Rumble, Rollins was hiding from everyone. Now he had J&J &J security, so he was being mm -hmm. an even bigger chicken shit heel. We get to the Rumble, and these three put on legitimately one of the greatest Very good in match. company history. There's insane spots. Rollins is Very good around match. everywhere. His security guards are being thrown around. Barricades are broken. Brock was dead. But at the end of it, it was Rollins who ate the pin. And now this man is even more annoyed. He was plotting something on Roman Reigns, but that plan was halted when Randy Orton returned to the WWE mm -hmm. and he got into the good graces of yep. the He gave him the middle finger live on television. They had to move the camera down. This was so good. So, so good. Again. He laid out Rollins, and this brought us to a match between Rollins and Which Randy. Which was very good at WrestleMania 31. 31. Meanwhile, Roman Reigns had came back from his hernia surgery, and he was receiving a huge push. On the same show, he was going to be fighting Brock Lesnar for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And because this push was harder than Vince at the age of <laughs> 80, 
we all thought that Roman was gonna win. We get to Santa Clara. Rollins and Randy was actually a really good match. Really I good. I would say it's a little overshadowed for what happened. That, of course, being Rollins getting posterized with one of the greatest <laughs> KOs ever. Yep. He lost that match. So Woo! We're all thinking his night's essentially over. He took his mangled briefcase and he walked off. End of the night, Reigns versus Lesnar. They tear strips off each other. They put on a fantastic match. And I'd say it's the best match they've put on ever. Yep, I think a lot of us agree. This match was easily the best match they've ever put on. Nothing they've done after, when it's just these two, has even come close to their WrestleMania 31 match. And like I said, it's like full circle. We're coming full circle. They're main eventing SummerSlam. Seth may be the only one that can save us from that main event being pretty bland. Will their last man standing match be entertaining? Possibly. It can possibly, most likely, will be somewhat entertaining. But I think people want to cash in because they want to see something different. Some could say, well, having Seth do it again, how is that different? Well, he may be one of the most viable options because Seth has been carrying Monday Night Raw for the past few months. So, I don't know. Both these guys are absolutely spent. They're bloodied. They're tired. And they're both down on the mat. And just then, <laughs> down the ramp runs Seth Rollins. Yep. Surveys the scene. And like the mastermind he was, cashed in the money in the bank, stomped out Roman Reigns. And poetically enough, the same guy who he hit in the back with a chair to begin this whole thing, he pinned that exact same man so at cool. WrestleMania 31. Now, he was the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. The heist of the century was complete, a new star was born, and one of the biggest moments in WWE yep. history was created. And honestly, I was thinking about just how big a moment this was, and I want to put this question out to you guys. Since Rollins cashed in and it was unexpected, it was huge, it was the first of its kind, in a way, could you say that the money in the bank has peaked? Genuine question, because I can't think of anything else that could be bigger than what he did. This was the pinnacle of Money in the Bank cash-ins. It had everyone shocked. Mm -hmm. For the first time in company history, someone cashed in during the main event of WrestleMania. True. People had said it before, but Rollins became the first to actually do it. What followed afterwards was arguably more pivotal than his Money in the Bank run. A fantastic title reign filled with great defenses. The whole time he was slimy, he was evil. The cool tie-in with his title reign was that he fought those same people that he pissed off during when he was Mr. Money in the Bank. Yeah. Cena, Orton, Kane, Ambrose, Brock at one point. Even on Raw, he was putting on fantastic matches. Storylines made sense. They had him slowly become more and more confident and wrap the whole thing up as he broke away from the authority. Mm -hmm. And it worked really well. He did fantastic. He became a huge star. And then it came to an abrupt end. This was a really well done, well thought. Yeah, that's when he messed up John Cena's knee. Eight months as Mr. Money in the Bank. And slowly he won people over because he showed he was that good. Then when the title run came, they lined up credible challengers for him. By the time he came back from his injury in 2016, he was one of the most loved guys on the roster. What's followed for Rollins in the years after is a fantastic body of work, character reinventions aplenty, and becoming one of the absolute industry leaders in all aspects. This whole run is how you build a star, and for a lot of Money in the Bank winners, I can't say they've had a path like this. They were able to give him the contract, and what he did with that contract was exceptional. They slowly built him up, and then when the time came, they struck. Call him the architect, the messiah, the drip god, the visionary, <laughs> the future. But the work he put in, the booking he had, the moment he gave us, and honestly how no one has equaled this amount of success since, makes him the last great Mr. Money in the Bank. You know what? I may have to agree with you on that one. I think a lot of us may have to agree with you on that one, bro. As I'm really thinking about it, I don't think there has been another Money in the Bank cash in that monumental. I, I think it may be one of the greatest cash ins. It, it, it's up. It you, I, I, to be honest with you, I one of my favorite cash ins was Dolph Ziggler cashing in the night after WrestleMania on Alberto Del Rio. That was such a beautiful moment because Dolph deserved every ounce of that crowd love. But this one may be none. It may be one of the best cash-ins. When it happened at WrestleMania, the main event, 
No one saw it coming. Everyone assumed Roman was going to win. When you heard his music, I lost my shit. I was like, oh, my God. They're about to pull a swerve, a great swerve. And it was fantastic. And ever since that happened, Seth Rollins was a made man. He was a made man. So I, I really don't know if I can think anyone after Seth Rollins that really was come to that level of cashing in. The level of cashing, cashing in is monumental. And then them being the top guy after the cash in. I don't know. I think he may have been one of the greatest last, you know, one of the last greatest money in the bank uh, winners. And we may get a repeat. I think a lot of people feel like he will be the favorite. And to be honest with you, with all these injuries and them having to pull so many audibles, it makes sense. In my opinion, it makes sense if, if Seth Rollins is to do it. I'm just being dead ass. Because... Of the audibles. You could have somebody else. But I think it makes sense. If Seth Rollins wins. I will. I can agree. He was the last great Mr. Money in the Bank. In my opinion. I can't think of anyone else. Money in the Bank win. And subsequent title run afterwards. Being that monumental. And that impactful. Than Seth Rollins title win. Uh, well Money in the Bank win. And uh, him cashing in at the, rest, at the uh, WrestleMania 31. So comment down below. Let me know. Is Seth Rollins the last great Mr. Money in the Bank winner? And do you think he will recreate the heist of his century, the heist of the century part two at this year's SummerSlam? I appreciate all love and support. Road two. 9K, appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.